All right, guys, we're going to talk about one of the most frustrating shots, absolutely aggravating shots. Your ball lands on the green, rolls off the green, and settles right, right against the collar of the rough. Now there's this big clump of grass right behind my golf ball. I don't know how it's going to come out. I hit it hard, and it shoots across the green at 1,000 miles an hour. I try to take it easy, and I chunk behind the ball, and it's just so frustrating. Well, I'm going to talk about three different options that we can use to play this shot. So the first option would be the putter. We're going to go ahead and set up this ball. Now, when I don't like using the putter, this is probably the easiest one to get it pretty close to the pin, but when I don't like using the putter is when the grass is over the entire height of the ball. So you'll see here, there's blades of grass that are completely over top of the ball. Now, what that means is I can't hit a thin putt, or I can't hit a putt off the bottom of this putter blade without getting grass stuck between my club and the ball. So I know for sure if I have this particular lie, if I try to hit that, that ball is going to get grass smashed between the club and the ball and it's going to be very inconsistent. I'm going to get one that I'll hit and it'll come out two feet and then I'll try to swing a little faster on the next one and it shoots off across the green at a thousand miles an hour. So typically I do like the putter. I think that's the easiest play but I want to make sure that it's more of this kind of a lie. Now you can see the top of the grass isn't all the way over top of the ball so now I can come in I can hit a little bit of a thinner putt and it's going to come out all right. So those are pretty easy to handle. I'd use a putter with those, or we could use the next option, which I'm gonna go over, which is a nine iron. So here I've got back to where now the grass is completely over top of the ball again. We don't wanna use the putter, just a little too risky. Now I wanna use a nine iron. So if I'm coming here, what I'm gonna do is this would be my normal lie angle where the sole of the club is level with the ground. You can see that's completely flat with the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and stand this club up a little bit more vertical so now the toe of the club is sticking down into the turf. That's gonna look something a little bit more like this. I'm gonna set up a little closer to the ball, and now my hands are gonna be like almost like a putting stroke. What that's gonna do there is instead of having this entire leading edge, this entire sole coming down and catching the grass, now we just have the toe in this nice U shape on the bottom. So it's gonna glide through that grass a little bit easier and not get caught up as much. So again, I'm gonna set up, that this will be my normal nine iron setup position. I'm going to set up a little closer to the ball. I'm going to raise that handle up more vertically. And now this is going to glide through the turf a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of a forward shaft lean. And it's going to be very similar to a nice putting stroke. And I've chipped that one up there almost about a six inches from the hole. So it came out very nicely and rolled out. And you can see that it, even though it hit the face, it's going toward more the bottom of the face. And that's allowing it to slide through the turf a little bit. If I tried to hit it up there, that's just too much grass between my club and the ball. Now the final option for those of you who may not like either of those is the hybrid. My personal opinion, I think it always comes out pretty good with a hybrid, but sometimes it comes out a little too good. So it comes out a little too hot for my own personal opinion. I like to use the putter when I can. I use a nine iron when I can't do that. And I use a hybrid. Some people really prefer this. I'm going to use the same technique I did with my nine iron. Tow that up a little bit scoot a little bit closer, get a little bit of a putting stroke. Sometimes I find out it just jumps a little bit too hot. But I do think this is a very effective way to make sure that you get it out of there every time. Because it usually comes out too hot, it's always going to get out of there. You very, very rarely chunk one with a hybrid because the, the sole is so thick that it doesn't tend to grab the grass and dig it down in there and chunk. Now the one club I don't recommend is using a lob wedge. I see players try to do this a lot. They'll use a lob wedge, they'll put it back in their stance, Let's imagine I got a lot of loft on this club. This is my nine iron, but let's pretend this is a lob wedge. And I got this very sharp edge and I'm trying to kind of pop down on that ball. Well, that's very easy for me to hit chunk and my club never makes it to the ball at all. And I wouldn't recommend that. We want to have these nice, smooth, kind of level strokes. And we're using clubs that are going to glide through the grass rather than get caught up in the grass. So I'd recommend don't use the lob wedge. It's just too inconsistent. Too many variables coming in there. But lastly here, I recommend you test it. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Go ahead and grab 10 golf balls, lay them down, hit 10 putts. Figure out how many of those putts were tap-ins and how many of those would be kind of iffy as whether or not you get it up and down. Do the same thing with the nine iron next. 10 more, measure them, see how many tap-ins you have, how many that you have that would be a little iffy. And then finally go with the hybrid and test those out. That way you can see not only your preference, but you're gonna have scientific evidence that backs up this is gonna be the easiest one to get up and down. Good luck to you guys. I'll see y'all soon. All right, guys, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an even better bonus for you. If we want to get distance in the golf swing, we've got to get a lot of lag, and then we've got to let that lag go. 
Well, I've got my number one lag video. I'm going to play a preview of that here in a second. If you're on a desktop device, go ahead and click the link that pops up in your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, click the iCard that's somewhere on your screen right now. That's going to take you to where you can get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're going to get five videos from our Top Speed Golf system. Never going to cost you a dime. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Click that thumbs up button. That really helps us out. And also remember to subscribe. That way you'll see our newest videos. See you guys in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 